Hello everyone, this is Unlikely Waffle here, and welcome back to Survive a Life, my Minecraft tutorial series. It has been a little while since I last did an episode, but in that time, I have made a few changes. We finished up our tunnel downstairs, and you can see I've also gotten myself a new garden shed right there. I ended up despising the old one, it was just horribly laid out and everything, so I tore it down and rebuilt it. You can kind of see that it's tapering out to the sides as well as upwards, so it looks a little bit interesting from this angle. But, that is not very important today. We might not even get around to looking at it, but we'll see. Because today, we are going to be taking our first step into the magical world by making potions. That is right, we are going to be working with brewing today. Well, first step of magical world if you don't count going to the nether. And the reason I decided to do my intro up there, oh, well then now there's a hole there. I'll get that later. Is because I was getting a little bit bored with having to do all my intros down here in this cave. It was just getting too repetitive. So, up to the roof it is. Anyways, for today we are going to be needing quite a few mob drops. We are going to grab spider eyes, magma cream, blaze rods, those are very important. Gas tears, gunpowder, luckily I have plenty of that. There's been a lot of creepers lately. I don't think there's anything else here. We need, yep, puffer fish. Redstone would be over here. I'm going to grab some of that. We are also going to grab... Do I have... Yes, I do. Alright. I don't remember if I've shown you this, but the way you make glistering melon is you make a whole square of nuggets. Then you put two melon right in the middle of it. Melon slices, not melon blocks. And that gets you glistering melon. Let's come upstairs and we will craft the brewing stand. I've also set up myself a very temporary place for growing netherwort, which is very important for what we are going to be doing today. Let's just grab as much of this as we can. I'll replant that later. Okay, so for the brewing stand, you just need to place one blaze rod right here in the middle. And if you don't place anything else with the blaze rod, obviously you can see that we get blaze powder from that two powder per rod. That is going to be important, but not right now. Oh, darn. I forgot my cobblestone. Okay, let's pretend that didn't happen. We have our blaze rod right in the middle. Place three cobblestone on the bottom, and that is as simple as that. There is nothing more that you need to do to that to get yourself a brewing stand. I still need to fix that hole in the ceiling. That's going to bother me. I'm not going to look up. I'm just going to look down here at the floor. For now, I'm just going to place my brewing stand right here in the middle of the living room. That seems like a good place for it. And now we also need to make ourselves some glass bottles to hold our potions. Just place three glass in a V as if you're making a bucket. And I'm going to make 19, stack, 19 batches of bottles, which is a total of 57. You can fill the bottles from a cauldron with water. However, you can only fill three bottles from that before you empty the cauldron completely. But, if you fill them from a water source like this, then you get as many as you can hold. Which for me right now is not very many. Because I don't have much room. Let's get rid of that slab. And the other bad part about that is, they don't stack. So we're going to have to store some up here. And I'll see you as soon as I get them all made. That seems like a good amount for now. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to show you is how to craft a fermented spider eye. You do that by grabbing your sugar, mushrooms, and your spider eyes. Come down here to a crafting window. Place one sugar, one eye, and one mushroom in the window. It is shapeless, so you can have it however way you want can have it up there in the corners and make a triangle out of it and it'll still work. Let's make a couple of those now. Just to be safe. 
The brewing stand, this is what the GUI looks like. Here you put the ingredient that you're putting into the potions, and here you can put up to three bottles. It'll work with one, but it's most efficient at three bottles. And you can see that's doing nothing now, because it's just water bottles. There are several different base potions that you can make in a brewing stand, which branch off into other potions. The first one is a thick potion made by placing one glowstone dust in here. I'm not going to do this because it's not very useful. I'll explain why in a minute. Next one is extended mundane potion, which is made by placing redstone dust into the brewing stand. Another one is by placing one spider eye in here. That will create a potion of weakness, which makes you deal less damage which each, which, with each hit. And the last one of the useless ones is mundane, regular mundane which is made by placing any of these other ingredients in here. The reason these four potions are useless, is, or next to useless, they're not exactly useless, is because those only make potions of weakness. So that's why we have plenty of nether wart. If you place one in here, you can see that this starts to fill up. And when it gets to the bottom, we will have three bottles of awkward potion. This potion leads to every other potion in the game, including weakness. Although it's not very useful to make weakness from an awkward potion because you could just make it from a regular spider eye, and you're good. So now we have awkward potion. No effects. I'm going to be showing you some of the most useful potions in the game. However, this is obviously not exhaustive, so I will link a infographic down in the description if you want to check it out. The first one is speed, which is made by placing one sugar right in there. Let's wait for it to go. And just like that, we have a very glowy potion now. You can see that this is now potion of swiftness, speed of three minutes, and when applied, it gives you 50 per, uh, 20 percent more speed. Let's try this out real quick. Just drink it with the right mouse button. Our field of view changes. We get all these particles. You can see we have the countdown timer up here. And we just run around as fast as we possibly can. However, that isn't as fast as we can. Because we can also come in here and there are four modifiers for potions. Those would be glowstone dust, redstone, gunpowder, and again the fermented spider eye. When you put the glowstone dust in, then it increases the strength of it. So this will probably give us Swiftness 2, instead of Swiftness 1, which it is now. And it does. Instead of uh, Speed 1, we get Speed 2, and that gives us almost 50% more speed. However, if you notice, then it also does reduce the time that you can have it for. So instead of 3.30, it is now 1.30. So watch out for that. Let's see what this looks like. Even bigger field of view, and even faster. Oh, that's getting a little bit hard to play with. Let's come back in here. If we place the redstone dust in here, then instead of making it stronger, it'll actually increase the duration. See, now we have speed 1 again, so we're slower, but we last for 8 minutes. That is a huge amount of time for having this speed on you. Also, if you wanted to, instead of drink it, you wanted to splash it at your feet, simple, just place some gunpowder. It makes sense. Gunpowder explodes and it makes the bottle explode then. Just like that, the bottle itself has changed and it gives us speed for six minutes, but we don't have to drink it now. We just toss it near us and we get the effect from it bouncing off the floor not as fun though all right let's come in here put three more bottles grab some more nether wart now that we have awkward potion we can place magma cream in there and what that will do because magma is made of fire basically it'll give us a potion that will make us resistant to fire 
which is extremely useful for going into the nether with, because if you land in lava, you don't burn! And thusly you don't lose all your items in the nether. See, now we have fire resistance. Let's drink that. And now we can see that we have a fire resistance for just under three minutes now. And we get all these orange particles. So beautiful. While that is cooking, I'm going to come over here, grab a golden carrot for our next potion. Hopefully it should be ready now. Yes, it is. Good. Place the golden carrot in there. And this, personally, is my favorite potion just because it's so fun to use, especially in the nether. I might show you why in a future episode. Wait for that to go down. That gives us night vision. Oh, this is so much fun. Because you can see that it already brightened it and we're in the middle of the day. We can see almost everything in the lake. Because what we can't see is blocked. But at night, it makes it just this bright. You don't ever have to worry about going out at night and not being able to find anything. Next one we are going to do is a pufferfish. Pufferfish needs to be on an awkward potion, just letting you know that. I forgot that myself. There we go. Put our pufferfish back in. Meanwhile, while we were waiting for that, we are going to come over here, grab our blaze rods. Let's, let's just do half of them. Uh, let's put a few in there. And we're going to grab our blaze powder from that. Just toss that night vision potion. We can pick that up later. Actually, let's just pick it up now. And now with the puffer fish, we get water breathing. This way, we don't drown when we go into the water. Let's see if I can find a deep enough place out here. Do I have the water breathing? Yeah, right there. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Otherwise, this would be a terrible example. Let's drink this real quick. And now, we still have an air chart down on our bar. However, because we drank a water breathing potion this time, it is going down much, much, much slower than it was before. This is really good for going and fighting in a water temple with the guardians. Of course, drinking potions all day can get a little tiresome and it might upset your stomach a little bit. So we're going to come over to our cows. Grab us a bucket, bucket of milk from them by placing a bucket with them, and it fills it up with milk. When you have an effect on you, you just drink the milk, and it will instantly go away, whether it's good or bad. Awkward potion, now for a blaze powder. We're going to wait for that to brew up. And that gives us a potion of strength that more than doubles our attack damage that we do with each swing. So when we have this on... Instead of taking like two or three hits to kill something, then it will probably only take one. Let's see how many takes hits it takes to kill one of these guys. Apparently one. Alright. Well, even with the potion of strength, it'll still make it so that we can kill them even faster. Next up is the glistery melon. We're just going to place one melon slice in there. And that gives us instant health. If I had any damage, I would show you, but I don't. But as it is right now, I believe it gives you back two hearts. But this is an opportune time to show you what this fermented spider eye does. What the fermented spider eye does is that it corrupts the potion. It will either make it weaker, like if you had added uh, glowstone dust to it, or it might even turn it into a complete opposite potion. Like this one, instead of instant health, now it's instant damage. And now it's a perfect time to show you that that does three hearts. Okay, so it's three hearts of damage, three hearts of healing. If we place another fermented spider on there, though, it won't revert it back. If we place a glowstone dust in there, it's not going to revert it back to its original potion. It's just going to make this corrupted potion stronger, like you would expect it to be. Also, if you wanted to cancel the brewing, just take out the item, and it'll stop it in its tracks. The spider eye itself, it makes poison. 
This gives you pretty much the same effect as if you ate uh, zombie flesh or raw chicken and you got food poisoning. Very similar, if not the exact same. So let's try this one out. We have poison for 45 seconds. So yes, we have poison, which I believe is the same as food poisoning. And we don't have any milk on us, so we might might not survive this all that well. Okay, now that we are down at half a heart of health, I'm going to show you our last one, which is using the gas tier. That is going to give you regeneration. It's not going to heal you instantly, but what it is going to do is make it so that you heal faster. Similar to if you ate a golden apple. So let's take one of these, come drink it, and we'll start healing quite fast. However, I want to ramp it up, so I will put some glowstone dust in there. And now we have regen 2. So that will heal us super fast. And much better. I'm feeling so much better now. It is nighttime now, so this is the perfect time to show you a potion of night vision. Look how good that is. It'd be even better if I had ramped it up before, but I didn't, just to show you what the baseline is like. But as we come up here, I have started building, just to test to see what I wanted it to look like, a potion hall. Or a magical hall, pretty much anything. Okay, I'm going to go sleep. Okay, so like I was saying... This is where we're going to put all of our magic stuff, like the portal. You probably saw that I did not have it up anymore, it's just in a chest now. Hello, spiders. And instead, we're going to move all that stuff over here, including the potions, into this tower. I kind of like the look of a jungle theme, so I'm going with cracked stone brick, chis chiseled brick, regular brick, m vines, and jungle wood. I've been growing a lot of jungle wood. As you can see, I have four stacks here and a fifth one back in the chest. But as we come to the bottom, I'm just going to show you that this is pretty much circular. And I'm tapering it up with each level. Each level is three blocks high. So it comes in one block for each three blocks. And it goes all the way to the top. And it will form like a cone and everything. I'm thinking of not having the... Oh, hello. Just give me more. Uh, yep, good gunpowder. I'm thinking of not having the entrance visible out here. It's just going to be a solid cone with maybe some windows and a deck up there. But instead, I might connect this over to this uh, track over here. Have it come underneath the mountain and then have an elevator coming straight up into the middle of our tower. This is also a good location for the tower. I liked this location that is because we can see over to our farms, over to the plant farms, and to our house. We can even kind of see over to where our first cave was that we did episode 2 in. I think it's right, either right there or right over there. I can't really tell. But I'm going to go ahead and do some work on this real quick. And I'll do a progress update in a second. Okay, it has been a couple hours and a couple days since my last cut, because shortly after that one, a windstorm came through and knocked out my power for the night, so it is the next day. But I got a few things done on here. I've completed the circle around. I've also gone up a few levels. Not too exciting, but not too shabby either. What I like to do is go through and do all of the wood first, and then come through and knock out all the blocks that I want to replace with the stones. And the vines as well. But now that I'm thinking about it, this is not going to be fun getting back down here without dying. Anyways, I'm just going to sign off right up here. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please feel free to leave a like and a comment below, and I will see you next time. So long, everyone.